All right. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kept Tech here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over, um, this is a video for new IT people. So if you, if you have experience and if you're you're not brand you're not brand new at all and you're already starting your job and everything. Obviously, this is not the video for you. This video is for people that are new to IT. So if you need a help desk, you need IT support, I want to show you how to make your own lab, how to get started, where to get started, where to get the files, and how to do it, if that makes sense, using virtual box. Uh, obviously, you can use other ones, VMware, whatever you have. You can use all of them. All, whatever I do here, you can do the same thing on VMware. You could do it on VM Spear or whatever you're using. So Obviously, if you're new to my channel, do IT videos, this stuff, support videos, talk about how to get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way, you know when I go live. Greatly appreciate it. And join Discord, too, because we're on Discord, and it's free. So anyway, come by Discord. We don't bite. So um, why am I going over this? Um, I have videos on this already, by the way. Why am I going over this? It's because people are brand new to IT. Uh, and I made videos on it, but I don't actually explain what I'm doing. So I want to make a brand new video for people that are brand new to help us explaining what I'm doing, why I'm doing it this way, and what does the things mean that I'm doing and why I'm going over it, because you need to know this if you're brand new to IT. You need to know how to make your own lab because then you could add those skills to your resume. That's the only way you will learn. Obviously, it's not just about clicking buttons. It's more about actually learning what you're doing, why you're doing it, and actually explaining it to the manager. So but what I mean by that is you go into a job interview, um, they asked you like, what do I like? Tell me, tell me something you do outside of your job or whatever, or tell me a hobby that you do outside your job. And like, oh, in my in my in my situation or or my spare time, I have my own I have my own server set up. I have Active Directory domain services. Add users to, to the domain. I remove computers. I add computer. You, know, you start explaining that to a manager, or you basically the knowledge you learn from your hands-on training, you could use that to explain it during a job interview. If someone asks you what is Active Directory uses in computers, because you already done it before on a, on a virtual box, you could actually explain it or in VM, you could explain what you're doing, uh, how did you get to that answer and how to reset the account or what have you, if that makes sense. So let me share my screen with you real quick and show you how to get started. So the first thing I need you to do, if you're brand new to IT, I need you to download virtual box. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be virtual box, VMware, or any of those things. So I would go to google.com. I would go to virtual box download. I would download VirtualBox and um, just make sure you have the right one. If it's Windows, it's Windows, it's Mac, it's WAC. If, it, if it's Mac, it's Mac. If it's Linux, it's Linux. Just download wherever you have. Um, don't run it just yet. Second thing I need you to do, I need you to go to your computer or my computer. So I would go to the bottom left-hand side, this yellow triangle right here. If you don't have this, um, you just, you go here to the start menu, you do C and little, little dots and you open up run command, this one right here. This opens up the same thing as the C Drive Explorer or the C Explorer. I, I click on that. I right click on this PC and I hit properties. I just I just want you to look at the specs of your computer because we're, we're creating a virtual. Let me just stop sharing for a second. We're creating a virtual lab. So uh, can your computer handle that, that virtual lab that you're creating? The minimum for a server 2016 is two gigs. I typically add four to eight because I have enough memory. I have the specs to cover it. So do you have the appropriate specs or hardware to actually do it? So the, obviously this video is for brand new people and help us IT support. So ask yourself that question, if you're brand new to IT, does your computer have the capability of handling the VMs that we're about to run? If it doesn't, and your answer is no, um, create it on Microsoft Azure. I have a video below on the description in this video, you can, you'll see it and you can do it for free in there for, for, for about, you have uh, Microsoft Azure for 12, 12 months and then you have the lab for or the or the VM for 30 days. So there's always an alternative for something. You could do it on AWS as well. So this is what I'm going over this because people want to ask, oh, my computer doesn't support virtual box, my computer doesn't support VM where my computer doesn't you have to check all that. Obviously, if you have a laptop, you have to enable virtualization in the BIOS. So if you have a laptop, you have to enable virtualization in the BIOS. If you don't know how to do that, you may have to go to Google.com, just Google it and figure out how to do that. Um, so I have to go over it because some people, they, they, don't, they don't have enough memory or they do have memory and they don't know how much memory they should put on the VM, what have you. With me, I have a 64 gigs of RAM, so it's more than enough for anything I want to run. For somebody else that has a 16, 16 gigs of RAM, 16, I get this asked all the time, 16 is enough for anything you want to run. So just for today, we're going to do server 2016 and then I'm going to keep adding to the playlist. It's going to be a playlist, obviously. I'm going to keep adding to the video. So 
Um, and this is for new techs, obviously. It's not for if you're if you're you're watching this, like why is he going over this? This is not this is boring, you know. It's just for new techs, not for you. It's not meant for you, it's meant for people that are brand new to help us. So, all right, so let me share my screen with you again. Um, yeah, so you wanna you wanna download Windows hosts if you're wanting Windows machine. Um, I would download the extension pack as well, it's right over here. So you want to download those two things. I did that already. It's already installed on my computer. You can see it, it's right here. So that's the first thing you do. Second thing you need to do, um, you need to go to Microsoft Evaluation. I'll leave it below in the description. I need you to download Server 2016. It doesn't matter if it's Server 2016. It doesn't matter if it's Server 2019. Once you download it, you have to download the right one. So let me hit back. If people are downloading the wrong ones every time they do this. You want to download the ISO one. Not virtual lab, not not Azure, ISO. You hit continue. You put your first name, your last name, the company you work for. It doesn't matter. You can make up the company. You can make up the email address. Um, for some people that do this, by the way, they, they if you do this, you get like emails and notifications by Microsoft for webinars, for training, and then it's all free, by the way. So I don't know if you want to put your real email address in there. Usually I do, and I get free webinars and stuff like that by, by, by Microsoft. So it's entirely up to you. So then you hit continue and it's going to download the ISO, which, which I'm not going to download it again because I already did it like a hundred times already. So I'm not going to do that already. So I do is you close out of this. Now I'm going to install server 2016 on, on VM or virtual box. So for someone that's brand new, this is what you're going to do. You have it installed on your desktop. So it creates a shortcut already. You double click on this. Um, you hit new and you hit server or you type server 2016. We're going to call this lab and you want to change this to server 2016, 64-bit. You hit next. So I, remember we spoke about memory and hardware. You want to make sure you have enough memory to run this. Obviously, two gigs of RAM is more than enough. Me, I like to use eight. That's just me. So I'm going to click on eight. I'm going to hit next. Create our virtual hard disk now. I'm going to hit create, BDI, next. And then this is the hard drive space of your computer. So how much space do you have on your computer? I go to this PC again. Obviously, if it's not here, you go into C colon or the, the two dots and you hit run command. Um, you hit this PC and it's going to show you how much space you have. I have plenty of space, so this shouldn't be a problem for me. Me, I, I like to put 50. You can put 100 if you want, up to you how much space you have. Um, you hit create. And then usually what people do like to like they, they like to like go into it and put the CD. I don't like doing any of that. So I already downloaded the ISO. So literally what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit start. And as soon as you hit start, it's gonna capture Windows ISO. This is Windows 10. I don't want I don't want to do that. I wanted to capture that one. I wanted to capture the server 2016 one. So I'm gonna hit the, the, the folder right over here, the, the choose virtual optical disk file. I'm gonna hit the add sign. And this one is in pictures for me. It's wherever you download it, wherever you put it. Yours might be in downloads folder right over here. And you might have it here. I, I have Skype for Business, Server 2019, a bunch of stuff right over here. So yours might, might be there, but me, it's gonna be under pictures, if that makes sense. So click on this one, you hit open, you hit choose, you hit start. So once you do that, um, it should be self-explanatory. Obviously for some people it's not. So I like to go real slow. I'm gonna take my time with this one because I don't wanna rush it too much and people are gonna be like, you're going too fast. So we want to do is you you hit you hit next. Um, we're not going to repair the computer because this is a brand new install, so we're not repairing anything. So you're just going to hit install now. But that's a good function to know if you run into like your 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 server is not working, so you can run the ISO and actually run the repair on it. If that makes sense. So this is the issue where everyone gets stuck on. You want to run desktop experience. Why you want to run desktop experience? Is if you it tells you right there the options useful for, for when a GUI is required. For example, for a backwards compatibility for an application that cannot run server core installation or server roles features are supported. So um, you can read all this. It's like, I, I don't understand what the hell that means. You know, it basically means that when you in install the desktop experience, it's going to have the start menu just like this. It's going to have the start menu. You're going to have all the buttons there. You could press on it. If you if you install the standard evaluation, it's going to just be a, a, a black box with command lines. You have to run command lines the entire time and you don't want that because most environments don't have it set up that way. So you want desktop experience, and then you're going to hit next. Uh, obviously, no one rigs the, the terms of agreement, so it's totally fine. You hit next. 
we're not upgrading a computer because we haven't even installed anything yet. So you want to do custom install Windows only. So you hit next and you install it. That's it. That's pretty much it. I got to go over this because people that are brand new to IT, um, they don't know how to get started. So I want to make this video just so people that are brand new to help desk or IT. I'm like, just watch this video. You can watch this video. It shows you step by step how to do it. Uh, it's not too complicated. And I try to break it down as much as possible because people that are brand new to IT, they're uncomfortable. Uh, they, 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 they can't get out of their comfort zone. Um, they're stressed out because they don't know what kind of lab they should make. They're stressed out because they think they should be learning CCNA and all this other stuff when, when you're brand new to IT and you have no experience at all. Um, you're studying all these certifications, but you, when, when, in, in reality, you shouldn't be even doing that. You should be studying one certification. You shouldn't be all over the place and you should be focusing on landing your first job in IT. Once you, learn your, once you land your first job in IT, then you could go ahead and talk to me and you could ask me like, Kevin, I wanna be a sysadmin. Kevin, I wanna be a network admin. Kevin, I wanna get into cybersecurity. The first thing we care about, or the first thing anyone cares about that's, that is gonna give you IT advice is brand new. Brand new person, I'm like, yo, you gotta go and get your experience first. I'm gonna say that to you. I'm like, hey man, what are you doing? Like, stop studying all these certifications. I need you to focus on one thing, do one thing, study one thing and land that first job. Once you get that first job in IT, then we could focus on your career path. It's like going to, it's like going to college. You don't know why you, you don't know what you, you, you were, you're studying for, you're studying for something. And then you don't know what to do after that. You, you're getting stuck on it and you don't know what to do after that. You don't know, should I, uh, I'm majoring in this. Should I keep doing this or should I do something else? You, you, you get stuck a little bit if that makes sense. So that that's, that's the same thing with, with it. Like you don't know where your career path is until you actually start doing your first job in it. If that makes sense. Once you start doing your first job in it, then you're like, you know what? Cybersecurity is for me. You know what? I like network admin. I want to see what I want to see that. You know what? I want to be a sysadmin. So you start working with a lot of different teams once you get your first job in IT and you get to see and realize what you actually want to do. Because what happens is people get a job and they end up changing their career. So that's basically what it is. You know, you, you want to change your, you, you, you realize that you actually want to do this instead of that, you know? So that's why I tell people focus on landing your first job in IT um, and then you could focus on other certifications. And then if you want to actually get started on a certification, you just talk to the person that's in that company that you're working in and see how they got that job, if that makes sense. So if, if it's a sysadmin, and you talk to the sysadmin, and, and you want to know, hey, um, how'd you get that job? What certifications did you study? What did you do to get this job? You know, you, and if you were trying to be a sysadmin, you try to be a network admin, same thing. Like, what did you do? What did you learn? Oh, I learned CCNA or other Microsoft Azure, you know, stuff like that. So let, focus on landing your first job. Um, even before that, like let's do these labs, you know, the lab is going to help you fix your resume, talk to a job recruiter, apply everywhere. Uh, make sure you, you're confident in your answering your questions and job interview questions. You know, this is why I started my discord channels. I cover all that. So if you ever want to pop, like stop by, I was going to say pop by, that doesn't make any sense. If you want to stop by, let me know and just stop by and we'll, we'll do, because I'm doing one-on-one -on -one training in November. So Next week, I'm going to start doing it. So let me know if you're uncomfortable with something. Just let me know. I'm, I'm not going to ignore you. Just let me know. All right. So this is installed now, right? So I'm going to right click on the little CD icon right over here. I'm going to remove this because I already finished installing. It doesn't make any sense for me to have the CD there anymore. And then I'm going to do capital P, password123, capital P, password123. It's just whatever password you wanted to make it. Um, and then you do, you do for this, there's no control delete here. Obviously I can't do it. You go into input keyboard control delete, by the way, this input control delete, you'll see it in some of the jobs. Like if you're doing like screen share with someone, you'll have control delete on there, like as a button there, because some, some, some software applications to do remote, they don't have that feature. So you're gonna, they don't, they, they can't do the user cannot do control delete. So you have to do it for them. If that makes sense. If they're trying to change your password and stuff like that. So. Especially when they're remoting in, it's not going to let you do it. All right. So what we do is you just log in, capital P, password, one, two, three. Um, and um, yeah, it just logs you in. And then that's it. That, that now, this is where it gets very, very, very interesting. So just, just give it a second. 
It's going to log me in right now and just bear with me. So you see how old you have all these buttons here, a bunch of buttons here. So. Like I said, you gotta you gotta learn this. You gotta if you're helped us, you're you gonna hit yes for this. Um, basically, it's using your internet from. It's asking if you want to use your internet that's connected to the computer that you're using. Like I'm talking about, like the this actual computer, the computer in, at home. You want to use that internet? And you just said yes for now. Um, and then that's it. That's pretty much it for now. So I'm gonna start making more videos. So. Um, for my next video, I want to go over add roles and features, and I want to go over Active Directory. Then I want to add a computer to a domain, and then I want to add another computer to those. I want to add two computers to a domain. I'm going to show you how I did it. I'm going to show you how I do it, and I'm going to put a static IP, and I'm going to create a bunch of server, bunch of stuff on the server um, for brand new people that are brand new to IT. And I'm going to show you how to do that from scratch. So I'm going to shut this down and call it a day for now because I'm going to be I'm going to go live in the next 20, 30 minutes. So I'm going to call it a day for now. I'm going to stop sharing. And then that's it. That's pretty much it. This is for brand new people in IT. Obviously, if you're not new and you're watching this, you're like, oh my gosh, it's so easy. No, it's not easy for everyone. Just remember that, that there are people that are not as tech savvy as you or me. There are people that don't know how to actually do these things. I have to explain it and break it down because some people are not fast learners. You have to have patience with people. That's the reason why I'm going over this today. That's the reason why I have to go over it because people are not comfortable with doing this. It, it becomes overwhelming for someone that's brand new to IT. And I, I have to go over it. I know I've gone over this a thousand times, but I have to go over it in a different approach because you have to be out, you have to think outside of the box. You have to think outside the zone for someone that's brand new coming in. Like I didn't know any of this when I first started. So I have to go over this for someone that's brand new and talk to them as if I it was me if when I first started IT, if that makes sense. Anyway. With that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Really appreciate it. And I hope this video helps you out. Obviously, this is for new techs. Um, stay tuned for the next one. And the next one is going to be a playlist. And I'm going to go over Active Directory Domain Services. Then I'm going to go over a bunch of other stuff. All right. I hope you guys have a wonderful Saturday and happy Halloween. Take care. Peace. Later. And see you in a bit.